This video is brought to you by our wonderful Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys so much for enabling me to do this, and let's get right on with our show. What's going on, everybody? My name is Chad, and this week we are doing something that is super different and super fun. You may have noticed already the extremely long runtime of this video, and that is entirely intentional. I have 250 videos on this channel just dedicated to helping you guys learn Japanese, travel to Japan, and make the best of it without breaking the bank or getting ripped off. My whole channel's been dedicated to, to my opinion, to my viewpoint, and I think I've thoroughly explained it. But there's a lot of people all over the world that have done this too. People who, who've started studying from nothing and, and are now fluent, or maybe they're somewhere along the journey like we all are. There are people that have lived in Japan, been to school in Japan, dated Japanese people, work for Japanese companies. Like, th there's a wide spectrum of opinions, and I wanted to get those out as well. So, I spent about a week compiling videos trying to talk to people from all walks of life. People that are both fans of my channel and people that probably don't know who exactly I am. People from beginner level to advanced. People who have never met a Japanese person to are getting married soon. Skaters, models, teachers, Japanese people that run fishing boats. I, I tried to talk to everybody that I could, and I did. Now, over the week of interviewing these people, there's probably two things you got to know. A, I'm interviewing people all over the world. 90% of these interviews happen at like four in the morning, so if I sound not as energetic or happy-go-lucky as I probably look in this video, it's maybe because I didn't have my coffee yet. So pardon me if I'm a little droll. And number two is that we can't fit everyone into this. You see, my initial vision of this was to do five-minute profiles of language learners in all areas of learning all over the world and what they're doing and how they are, so that way you guys can say, hey, I can't even read hiragana, and then here's this dude over here who's a translator, and it, there's this disconnect, but I wanna show you guys that there's a route, and it is walkable, and you can do it. It is completely possible. Maybe you can relate to one of these people. Maybe you're trying to go to Japan, and you'll relate to Kenzie's story, an Australian girl who moved to Japan to go to a full-time language school like I did, but is still a beginner, hasn't seen the, necessarily the fruit of language learning like I have. Maybe you like Indigo. Uh, I don't think you're a Swedish rock star, but may maybe you're intermediate level and you're trying to wade through just what to do in the intermediate level when you're not in a class and you're studying by yourself. Maybe you're like Lin and you already spoke really good Japanese, but now you're navigating the job pool in Japan. I specifically picked these three stories because they spread out from beginner, intermediate, advanced. There are people from all over the world and they're also luckily good, very, very good friends of mine. I have more of these stories to come. I don't know how and when I'm gonna put these out because this video took me, I, I calculated like 22 hours of editing because apparently I'm not very good and I'm trying a lot of risky stuff. So I wanna put these out more, but it's only if you guys are interested. If you're not and you just want me talking about my journey, my walk, my opinion, I understand and doesn't hurt my feelings, let me know in the comments down below. I'll also put the social media links for all of these people down below. I tried to put it on the screen like I promised I would, but I couldn't find a font I like, so I'm just gonna put it in the description as well as in the comments. So if you guys would like to talk to these people, follow up with them, ask them questions, you totally can. In fact, I cleared it. They want you to follow them on social media. They want you to go talk to them and to ask them stuff. The nice thing about my channel is it's nearly 10,000 people on the full spectrum of language learning who are just eager to talk to people, and I love that. So I wanted to share that with you. Here's three members of technically my fan base, but my friend base, people that are buddies of mine, just wanting to explain their stories and talk to you guys. I'll see you at the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Stay tuned, and uh, I hope you guys get something out of this. I have with me now my friend Kenzie, who is attending Genki. Kenzie, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. Thanks, Chad. I'm, you know, it's like, quarter to 12 in the in the night but i'm well <laughs> look that's that's not my fault well it, it, it's mostly my fault i couldn't figure out how to do this but that's all right we got there in the end <laughs> so for, i'm sure some people on my channel might know you just because you were like pretty active in the comments and and in the community and stuff for for people who don't know you could you just introduce yourself and a little bit of your story, like learning Japanese and what's brought you to where you're at right now? Um, so I actually worked it out before I started talking to you um, before that I've actually been watching your channel for almost three years, mm. um, quite actively. Um, you know, I've 
been wanting to study Japanese for about four to five years. Uh, it did take me two years to finally get here and start studying, um, you know, as a student here. Um, but it's it's been awesome, you know, like everything from, you know, just watching, knowing more about Japan before I came here to then experiencing when I'm here as well. Um, but, you know, I, gosh, what else did I do? Oh. It actually, like I said, it took me, you know, two years to finally get here. You know, I was living in New Zealand. There wasn't any way for me to get like a tutor online or go to, you know, some night classes or anything. So hence why I'm here finally. Um, yes. Plug was... my channel. Give me views. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, before. I will rev it up. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> but before you, uh. You, you know, you committed, this is Japanese is what I'm going to do. Did you try learning languages before that? Um, so in high school for, you know, about maybe six to nine months, I did start learning Japanese, but it was just, you know, introducing yourself and, you know, the first 10 numbers and then hiragana and katakana, but that was, that was it. Um, you know, and then for the two years leading up to me moving here, I was on Memorize, you know, and then again, watching Chad's channel. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> feed me views. Um, I was on Memorize, but again, um, it's Memorize can be interesting for a beginner. You know, the first sentence that you really learn is there are a lot of taxis and stuff. So I thought I was the bee's knees knowing that. There's but, a lot of taxis here. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was the first sentence. I said to my mom when we got to the airport here, I was like, Mom, I can't even tell you the one sentence I know about there being a lot of taxis because there is none. <laughs> there is no taxis at the airport. <laughs> but that was that was the main like, the main part of my Japanese learning before I moved here. This I'm always curious to find out from people because Japanese is such like a, a specific thing. Because when, when mm. people typically want to learn a language, at least where I'm from in America, right, it's French, German, Spanish, something that's kind of similar to English. Mm. And it takes a certain yeah. type of idiot to look at Japanese <laughs> yeah. and just the mountain of effort it takes to learn and to go there because it's like on the other side of the world. And y yeah. you really have to be a numbskull to go, yeah, th th this is the way I'm going to go. So what, you know, what made you look at this mountain and go, yeah, I'm going to climb it? Fuck it, I won't climb it. <laughs> Sorry. That's a great, I mean, that's a great response. <laughs> um, it was, okay, so, you know, your typical freaking person that wants to learn Japanese obviously got into the whole anime, manga world. Um, but from we alert. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'll be the first to admit it, you know. But um, what from that stemmed the history of you know japan and japanese language in itself like i've always been an avid fan of ancient cultures like ancient egypt ancient rome you know the aztec clans and all that kind of stuff so finding out that japan had a long you know an interesting history i was kind of like i kind of want to know a little bit more about that you know and learning the language would probably get me a better insight um into the history of the country as well the, you you said you basically started because you you know you like anime and you're like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna learn to watch this or read this right is the yeah. reason you keep studying right now like the reason you get up and you're not just depressed to go to school is the it the same reason you started or do you think it's changed I think it's still the same but at the same time it's changed a little bit like I obviously my main drive when coming here was like, all right, I want to be able to, you know, read a manga, you know, in Japanese and understand it, or, you know, at least watch part of a show and understand it. Um, and then, you know, get into maybe more of the history textbooks. But now after coming here, I'm like, well, it's like a way of life. Japanese is a way of life here. Um, you know, it's, and you can communicate with so many different people. I didn't think I would meet the people, the Japanese people, that I've met today if it wasn't for Japanese language, for sure. 100% agree. It's a very different thing talking to them in English and then talking to them in their own language. Yeah. I actually read a study once that was saying you actually have a different personality in the different languages you speak. Like the yeah, in one, sure. you, you're 
per, you actually could take a personality test and get completely different results based on the language, but the same questions. Not, I can't get on that track because I'll, I'll just do more language facts, and that's not what this is about. But <laughs> that's um, all right, maybe at a later date. <laughs> yeah. So, what what level? If you had to consider yourself a level, what would it be? Do you have any like referent? like what books you're in or what you're studying right now? I, okay, so a really good one for me is I have watched My Neighbor Totoro for years. Like we're going on maybe six, seven years. I've been watching it in both English dubbed and, you know, Japanese subbed. Um, and it was on at the school a few weeks ago with the movie night on Thursday nights. And I was able to sit in the lounge and probably comprehend about 60% of it. I know it's like great. a child's movie. Um, well, but even that then, was they like use real, adult language. That's that's huge. It was a real big turning point for me as well, realizing that because I thought I was at a stalemate, um, you know, with my language going, oh, you know, I can have a conversation, but it's not very good. And then watching the movie, I'm like, that's that's a big that's a big step forward for me. Yeah, I mean, you're, there's spheres of knowledge. And you're going to know certain spheres more than others. And if someone drives the conversation towards, you know, nuclear physics, you're probably not going <laughs> to understand very much. But if they drive it towards, wow, there's a lot of taxis in this parking lot, <laughs> you're going to be close to 100% comprehension. You, right? you feel me? So yeah. it's it's finding the little things to keep you going because you're going to feel really discouraged throughout the whole process. Yeah, and yeah, as long cool. as you can find little baby things that make you feel good and show you that you're making progress, you're gonna be able to keep going. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm like I'm not an alcoholic, but I do enjoy drinking. And you know, I there was this fantastic friend that I had before I left. Um, you know, about a week ago, and I used to go out with him a lot. Um, and the people that he knew, um, I slowly was able to talk more and more with them. And then when I went out with them last week is going away i was having a fantastic conversation in japanese again that proved that i was learning you know i'm not just wasting my time at a school and paying top dollar for it well let me ask you if you had to put yourself as like an arbitrary level like beginner upper beginner intermediate advanced what, what would you consider yourself um i would say like high beginner well upper level beginner um, for me, but you know, if I was to take a test, they'd probably say, no, you're still probably on your way to an upper beginner. So given all that, given that you, you know, you, you, you through these books, you're six months in your, you're living the life in Japan. Yeah. What would you consider in the language, your strongest suit and your weakest suit? Um, um, probably my strongest would be that I can talk to office workers at an izakaya. <laughs> is that is so, that as a point? <laughs> yeah, yeah, speaking. It's speaking and listening. Um, my weakest point would actually be like in class listening. So when we've got listening comprehension things that we need to do, that can be a bit of a struggle. All right, second to last question. Mm -hmm. I when I started my channel. I was studying Japanese for less time than you have been. So I probably oh. should not have been giving people advice because I was very new. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that even though I was new, I did have some valuable input. You know, I, I did that Tay form video, like how to remember the, the yeah. differences between the katakanas because they look really similar yeah. and all that other I stuff. I that. think no matter where you are, on the journey you have some val valuable advice so if someone came up to you today or wrote you today or i don't know stalked you outside your house next to the porn store today and <laughs> said that's a truer statement than you guys probably want to hear but um <laughs> it, it, is this where i tell the, is this where i tell the listeners why that i live next to one no no we're, we're gonna just pass over that like it, it never happened <laughs> if someone found you out front of there like one of the girls comes out and she goes i want to learn japanese Mm. do you have any advice for me what advice would you give them go just go like if that was if i if i was in australia and someone said you know i want to learn japanese you know where would be the best institution to go or what should i do to learn it i'd say just go to the country just go like i regretted it so much not coming here when i wanted to and leaving it for you know a year and a half um just come to the country 
meet someone that goes out, go out with them and just talk. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to understand half of what they're saying or even, you know, 90% of what they're saying. Speak but for it yourself. Gives you, yeah, right. <laughs> but it gives you the opportunity to meet fellow, you know, Japanese learners as well as Japanese people. You know, we're all in the same boat, you know, learning wise, you know, just get out there and talk. And also watch like, Chad Zimmerman's channel every Wednesday and Saturday. That's right. Oh my God. How could I forget to add that in? That was the most Chad's important channel, part. Chad's channel really helped me. Don't patronize I, I, me. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, man. I'm just trying to get, get those sweet, <laughs> sweet views. All right. Last question. And this one's interesting. Everyone's given me, it's a two part question. The first mm -hmm. part, everyone answers the same. The second part is always different. So you ready? Okay. Part A, do you consider yourself fluent? No. Fuck no. Sorry. Okay, yours, yours is more Australian. <laughs> Fuck no. That's not a knife. This is a knife. This is a knife. Okay. <laughs> right. Second part, and this is the part where everyone does finally differ. What do you consider fluent? Ah. Uh, pass. Pass? Can I, can I do that? Pa sorry, can I not pass. Friend? Pass. Pass. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anything you want to the plug to say to the however many people are going to watch this before I let you go? Uh, watch Chad's there channel. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> thank you so much, Kenzie. I appreciate it. No, no. Thank you, Chad. Anytime. Anytime. All righty, guys. I am here with my buddy, Lin. He's one of the skaters that I met when I was in Fukuoka. Lin, how you doing? Hey, everyone. Hey, Chad. Yeah, I'm still good here, you know, just chilling out. So let me ask you, for people who probably don't know who you are except for like the two videos of mine you're in and the the stories I tell, can you introduce yourself? You know, what what do you do in Japan? What brought you over there? That type of thing. Uh, okay, so my name is Lin. I'm not actually Japanese, I'm Vietnamese. I came to Japan like uh, about four years ago. And now I'm in uh, Japanese university. When you yeah. first went to Japan, did you go to a Japanese university? Or did you even know Japanese when you first came over? No, not exactly. But like, uh, I have to go to the like uh, language school, you know? And then uh, when I came back from school, I just like, go grab the ball and just skating like, near the dorm which uh where i was in and i met this person which name is uh you know the one uh yuki yeah right yep. yeah i met him like uh by that time like four years ago and then we just become friends uh, till now and that's actually how i met both of you guys because we were yep. if i remember right it was a really hot day in i think it was late may or early june and you guys were skating, but you were just sweating your ass off. And so yeah. I was in a language school and just wanted to make Japanese friends, friends. and okay. stuff. So I went to, what was it, the the family mart that's right there on the corner. And I bought yep. everybody like yep. $40 in I... drinks. <laughs> so he, if you guys know that story, Lynn's from that. And I'm very grateful I got you on because... One of the things that I think was super cool with you is Japanese isn't even your second language. It's like your third. Yeah, it is my third language. What my second say? language is uh, English. Well, th that's going to change my questions, but it's going to change it for the better. So l let me ask you, before okay. learning Japanese or before learning English, uh, have you tried learning a language before and quit ever? No, I haven't. But like uh, when I was in... High school, I I have tried to like um go for the, like a uh, IELTS class in Vietnam, but it doesn't uh like it doesn't go go very well. So I just quit because it is just too too difficult for me. Actually, I don't. How did you get so good at English? I don't know, man. I don't know. How did you study English? <laughs> well, I just study like a uh, normal student back in Vietnam but like my life connects with English like every day for example when uh, I watch a YouTube videos it usually goes with English from being a Vietnamese student learning English 
what made you want to learn Japanese? Because it's such a, it's a very specific language you want to learn. Yeah, so it, it, it was like a, the Vietnamese and English um, alphabet is uh, very the same. And the Japanese is like, you know, uh, is different, you know. That's it. You, you probably have the most interesting starting story of all the people I've met. Most people say, oh, I used to watch anime and I wanted to be able to understand. <laughs> you're just like, no, it was so different. Yeah. Because like uh, back when I was in Vietnam, the anime is not that uh, kind of... Um, uh, popular in Vietnam, you know. This is for this is for the newbies out there. Because when I think of your Japanese, I think of someone who is essentially fluent. Like your Japanese is ridiculous, <laughs> and uh, we're not even going to talk in Japanese because we could. But you would completely show me up because I'm good at Japanese. But I'm n like you are on a whole different level. So uh, I want to ask if someone went up to you and said, Lin. I want to start studying Japanese. I want to learn Japanese. What advice would you give them if they want to be fluent? So uh, my advice uh, would be like um, you should use it a lot, like uh, just for look at it or just saying it. By looking at the ja the Japanese, makes uh, your like um, you can remember the the kanjis. But uh, it would be easier if you have a chance to come, like uh, actually come to Japan and like uh, studying in a language school and making friends and talking every day in Japanese. It's, it's uh, a lot different from like uh, studying by yourself. How actually long have you studied? How many years? I started uh, studying Japanese like uh, six months before I go to, the, to Japan, just that. And then from that, I just came here in Japan and study every day. Not just like uh, reading books or listen to the CDs in the books. No, no, just like uh, go out, make conversation with people, making friends. If you had to say generally what level you are from like beginner, intermediate, advanced, you know, upper, intermediate, all that stuff. What, what do you generally consider your level? Oh, I see. So um, I took. And two, like uh, two years ago, but I think I could go for N one now. But I don't think my kanjis are good enough for N one. But my listening and speaking is very good. So okay. everyone has like strong and weak points in language. Uh, right. I was wondering okay. if you could tell me what is your strongest point, which I think we might already know, and what is the thing my, that's your worst at? Okay, my strongest point is like um. I can give the Japanese the same answers and the same like a, you know, when the Japanese give you an answer, they do like some weird kind of like a gesture, you know, and my listening is very good though. But my weak point is I stuttering a lot. Last question, if you would. Okay. And this one's interesting because everyone answers it the same, I think. But with you, we'll okay. see. Do you okay. consider yourself fluent in Japanese? Hmm, I don't. Really? Yeah. You you could take N1. Yeah. You are like the I best still... speaker I know, and you don't consider yourself fluent. Yeah, because there are many people, like Vietnamese, that is more fluently in Japanese than me. Because like uh, when it comes to like um uh, that uh, fluently stuff. It means that, like, uh, I can give you a Japanese speech, like, everywhere, you know, using the formal Japanese. But without a subject and a theme, theme I can't. And, of course, I stuttering. So, that, yeah, that hurts a lot. And that crushes my soul. I feel like I'll never be fluent. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I appreciate the honesty. Everyone I've okay. talked to, and I, I've, I've met with someone who works for Fukuoka Line, like the app. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've met with an ambassador to Japan and all sorts of stuff. None of them have said they felt fluent, which is a very interesting answer. But I appreciate you giving me the time, dude. Th this means a lot that you were willing to stay up and talk to me. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's okay. Alrighty, with me now is Indigo. Indigo, how you doing? Doing great. It's a uh, sunny spring day here in Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, the sun is sh finally showing up again. It's all good. It is ice cold doing? here in America, so I am incredibly jealous. Oh, it's uh, it's a first then that uh, Sweden has the uh, upper hand with the weather, I guess. 
Well, for people who don't know you, which you are massive on the platform, which thank you for coming on my pitiful little channel. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, could you introduce yourself? Maybe talk a bit about your background with Japanese and all that other stuff. Uh, first of all, I, I definitely wouldn't call myself massive by any stretch of the imagination. Um, however, uh, I'm Indigo. I'm from Sweden. I just turned 26, uh, and I'm a musician and a YouTuber. Um, I sing in a band called Batar. It's a like Visual K style metal band. Uh, we've been doing the music for Tekken Seven lately, and also I run my channel where I do you know music related stuff, uh, remixes, covers, but also different types of videos, uh, stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been interested in Japan and Japanese culture, like you know, since I was a little kid, twenty years ago. Um, always wanted to go there. Always wanted to be a part of Japan and be a part of the the music and culture industry in Japan. You know, since again, I always loved Japan, but I didn't actually pick up the language until last year, like properly. So uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a good time to be alive. Just from seeing your tweets and stuff in Japanese, you are very far in advance for someone that's only studied a year. So props to you. Um, and we talked a bit about this yeah. off, I guess off, not camera, off mic, whatever that would be. Um, yeah. you, you, because you're Swedish, you obviously speak very good English. And besides the two that are basically inherent in your culture, did you ever try learning a different language? And then did you give it up? Um... As a Swede in school, like it's mandatory to start learning English in school from the age of six. Uh, and then at the age of 13 in seventh grade, you are uh, given the option to choose uh, on a, I guess, third language, um, Swedish, English, and then either Spanish, German. And, uh, um, and out of those three, I picked up German for reasons I do not even remember. I think it was a fan of Rammstein or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> took it seventh and eighth grade. And then ninth grade, I was like, well, this kind of sucks. So I, I just dropped out and took those hours on, you know, further deepening my English uh, skills. Uh, never picked it up again. And then I basically didn't study any more language until now Japanese. So that's, well, you know, three or four, depending on how you count, I guess. I would count that as four. I would count that as studying four. Um, I tried French, Spanish, and sign language before I ever got to Japanese, and I dropped all of them. So I am a Wait, pro. How's that? Uh, well, Spanish I did for credits. In America, you have to take languages, and since you know Mexico's right next to us, Spanish is the one you'll use the most. But I hated it. I didn't like the language. And then I tried to learn French because I thought girls would like me if I could speak French, and that doesn't matter when you have a bad personality. Good so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> so uh, I moved to sign language because my mom speaks sign language and I was so embarrassed to practice it that I never bothered after a year. And then I just was like, screw it. I'm going to actually learn something I want to use because I watched anime and I liked manga and I love Japanese music. I've loved Japanese music forever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just stuck with it. But this is, this is an interview isn't about me. We're going to we're going to move on. <laughs> I got a lot, like I got. I can't even speak now. I'm sorry. I got a bunch of follow up questions for you now. Like, but uh, well, here let's you save know, for another time. It's, no, it's fine. Whatever. We'll just we'll roll with it. <laughs> what do you want to ask? Well, I guess so. First, first thing. What's your favorite Japanese band? Oh gosh, can I tell you? Okay, my favorite of all times, Wanima. They're they're pretty new. They're Mentai rock or Mentai punk, I guess. They're uh, imagine kind of like new American pop pop punk mixed with like a reggae vibe. It's very weird. They come from okay. Kagoshima, which is very reggae inspired. Um, so it sounds like Warp Tour pop punk with that. But th that's my favorite in general. I found this new band like two days ago, and I can't believe how amazing they are. It's called Moroha, and it's in English. M-O-R-O-H-A. Uh, it, it is spectacular because from my Googling of it in Japanese, it's a two-person band. The guitarist is an actual monk, like a, a Shinto monk who doesn't speak, but he can play guitar. The main vocalist <laughs> is almost like a poet. Like it's it's like poetry, Japanese poetry, where he's telling a story. But every stanza that he does has to do with the title of the song. So let's say the title is tomorrow. The stanzas have to do with the kanjis that is tomorrow. So ashita. Oh, dude, that is sick. Yeah, so he basically writes all of his music as if the title... It's it's every stance is based on the title of the song, but it tells a story without using that word. It's it's really uh, weird. I love it. I have never heard of well either of those bands. Moroha, you say? Yeah, Moroha and Wanima. That up afterwards. Yeah, I'll send you links Dude, to that it. That sounds sort. <laughs> yeah, please do. What can I ask you? Because you are a musician. What what's your favorite Japanese band? Um, so like favorite all time, uh, definitely Muk Muk. 
um, found them actually by accident way back in 2006. They were coming to my hometown, Stockholm, and a friend of mine was like, hey, this Ben Muck is coming here. You want to come with me and see them? Uh, and I, I, I've heard of Dieter Gray, but I didn't know Muck at all. So I was like, yeah, sure. Went there, and it was like the best show I've ever been to at the time. So I was like, holy smokes. Start listening to them like crazy. Um, it's just the way they, they mix all genres in a way that I've never heard any other band, Western or Japanese, do. Um, everything from like slow jazz to like deathcore almost uh, in a very like proficient way. Um, I'm also a big fan of Demon Kaka, uh, oh, for sure. Japanese musician, singer of Seikimatsu. Um, usually tell that to Japanese people and they just laugh because apparently he's more of a he's more of a meme than an actual rock star over there these days. Oh, uh, yeah. Which I didn't know before I went there, so I was kind of uh, <laughs> sad about that. But yeah, I've met yeah, a couple cool. of those where you're like, "Oh, this band's awesome," but then you go over there and people kind of—it's more to laugh at them than it is to actually enjoy the yeah. music. No, no, wait, you actually like him? You know, <laughs> I uh, I'll, I have a playlist called Chad's Infinite Japanese Playlist. It's all like my favorite huh. underground bands. I'll send you a link to it, and you can go through it and see if you find anybody yeah. you like. But well, and I, I seriously need to pick your brain about music anyways, but we'll do this on a different podcast because this is actually going up as a compilation with all those other cool interviews I got to do. So we'll, I'll try and next keep this on the on road. Chad Zimmerman's channel. The next time on the Chad Zimmerman podcast. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> except I don't have one. Cool. Our, oh, actually, I guess we already covered three, which is brilliant. Uh, I was wondering what started you and you said you, you know, liked anime and that type of stuff, right? It's not specifically anime. I've I've I haven't actually watched that much anime at all lifetime um more of the like music and general culture um though it's kind of ironic because what actually got me into it was like spirit of the way so <laughs> I have a but, that. Yeah, but I, I don't actually watch that much anime um but like the culture in general and uh, the music and the video games and uh seikatsu and everything about like japanese life in general it's um i don't know it's it always spoke to me from a very young age you, you said you've only studied for a year though right Definitely. So, oh, like I started like studying, studying is kind of a big word, but I started learning uh, hiragana uh, by myself when I was 14, maybe. So that's a good decade ago. Um, and then in high school, uh, back in 2009, I uh, my high school offered a Japanese class, which I did take for six months. But like the six month test was the hiragana test, basically. Um so like all the Japanese I learned on my own and in high school basically covered like chapter two of Genki one. Uh, oh, wow. So I, I don't really count that. Uh, but then I actually started studying full time at university as of January of 2017. Uh, long distance course at a Swedish university. And then from here on, I think you start with Tobira or something like that. And after that, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, um, everyone's got intermedia is kind of weird. Everyone's got a different idea of what textbook to use. I used like four different ones before I found one I actually enjoyed. A couple different ones. Um, haven't actually seen that many YouTubers talk about Tobira specifically, but uh, that's the one this university uses, and they're all, yeah, it's really good. So I, don't know. I gotta hop on that bandwagon, get those views. I do it, man. I mean, after a year, what what would you consider your level? I mean, you're basically done with beginner, aren't you? Well, the the sad truth. Um, so what happened, which is kind of a blessing and a curse, is that by July, when I had my like summer vacation uh, in, between the terms of Gank One and Gank Two, um, my YouTube channel blew up, uh, and I went from I remember that. you know a few subs to uh, more subs. Um, so much so that by October, I kind of had to make a choice: like, do I keep studying full time or do I? quit school uh and like focus on youtube or do i you know keep studying but like maybe lose this momentum on um on the channel and i chose to quit school um and now i'm doing my youtube channel as a full-time job uh with an employee also for half a year now i think and that in itself is cool but that meant that i quit midterms so i finished the midterm test and basically i've done half of genki 2 i haven't done the second half at all um so i'm exactly at halfway point um that being said uh I, I do listen a lot to um what's it called japanese pod 101 as well and Great i've been like that. following that from the from the like beginner level and i'm currently in the middle of their lower intermediate and i'm, I'm kind of getting it ish um so i would say i'm i'm probably in the you know as a skill level maybe in the like in four ish maybe after almost a year of studying at a university um 
I can typically speak to people when I'm there um, at some base level, but you know, every every five minutes they'll say something, and I don't get a single word they say, and I just kind of so this man, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it, 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 it's awkward, but it, it gets the job done. Uh, we can go out drinking like a bunch of us, and I can join in somewhat. So yeah. The drinking must help. I'm I'm straight edge, so I don't drink. But man, I wish I could. It would get rid of some of the nerves. I mean, not not to like go into too much of your private life, but how does the you know being straight edge in Japan, which is a very drink centric country, like the culture yeah. in general, is that ever an issue in like it, social situations? Okay, so I've had two instances where it mattered. Um, one is I work for a tattoo shop there. I don't know if you know anything about the tattoo culture in Japan. It is pretty run by some unsavory characters typically um, uh, so I've, I've been told uh, they you do not disrespect them at all and i made sure to tell my boss his name's yas um very respectfully hey i don't drink i totally understand if you do not want to employ me because of this if you want to go out to drink i will always go with you but i will have coke and it's just how i am um, he didn't understand it, but the nice thing was he respected my decision so much that he didn't care. So that that didn't matter to me with my job. And a lot of people have almost oblig uh, English obligatory drinking sessions with bosses after work. I'm very lucky I didn't find yeah. one like that. So if if it was like a regular suit and tie job, which I could never work, um, then I would probably have a problem. But it hasn't been a problem that thus far. The other time is I have a bunch of friends. They're all like skater hoodlums. And uh, the nice thing about the Japanese is they're incredibly compassionate. Like they, they understand. They don't offend. They, they just want to make sure you're doing good. And in the Japanese mindset, as, as well as many countries, right? You have a friend. You go out and drink and you pay for their drinks. And it's this kind of social interaction to be like, hey, you know, you're in the group. Um, it was weird the first time I went out with them to drink to convince them I don't do it because I don't speak Japanese very or I didn't speak Japanese very well at that time as well as I don't speak English apparently very well but they they understood they they were very considerate and actually they're like oh should we just leave and go to like a McDonald's or whatever and I was like no we can stay it's fine I don't mind being in the bar it's just I don't drink um, and over time they've become more understanding of it it's something you don't necessarily turn them down if they buy you a drink but I don't drink it. I'll always, if they bring a drink out, I'll thank them and I'll be very courteous, but I'll enlighten them that I do not. And I'll ask someone next to me to kill it. And maybe I'll even order them a drink or something. I just don't personally don't do it. Despite the long explanation. Like, what, what, no, no, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I've like, I have friends who are straight edge here in Sweden, but just the situation of having like, of being like non-drinking in Japan is to me very like, I also do respect it, of course, but I, I like, I haven't, it, it it doesn't really go together in my brain in a way, uh, just because they're like people drink all the time there, and you know. Oh, so, I, yeah, but uh, if you're able to do it, like more more power to you, dude. It is definitely not the ideal life choice if you're someone that wants to go to Japan. Um, you're gonna have a lot of awkward conversations and weird interactions, but it's not something that I it's not something that I chose. It's just how I've always been. I've never drank. I've never even tasted beer, and I'm 24. Um, just never been a part of my life and it's not something I necessarily wanted to do. So because it's so much a part of me, it's not really this like life choice that's so hard to uphold over there. It's just kind of, this is just how I am. And you know, if, if someone over there doesn't accept it, I understand. I live a very weird lifestyle. There's probably many things that they won't get about me. It's fine. I will find someone that does understand me. Go on, man. Keep it real. Yeah, but we're we're gonna get back to the actual conversation. <laughs> See, the problem Sorry, is you're so derailing. You're so easy to talk to. It's it's the accent, it's the kindness in the voice. Like I could just go on forever, and this is dangerous when I'm trying to actually <laughs> put stuff together. I'll be more gruffy and uh, have a heavier accent. There you so, go. Yes. Just <laughs> yes. do some sort of Cockney accent. That way, I feel more <laughs> more more inclined to hurry this along. Um, for anyone right. who is. <laughs> For anyone who is new to Japanese and new to this whole culture thing, um, and, and they come to you and they say, Indigo, you speak Japanese on Twitter. You're really cool looking. Uh, I see pictures of you in Japan all the time. Can you give me some advice on someone who's never studied the language? Where do I start? What do I do? What advice do you have for me? What would you tell that person? Uh, that is a great question, Chad. Uh, I have not actually been asked that question, so I'm going to just assume you just did. Um, oh boy, um, if you're an absolute, absolute beginner, you've never heard the word hiragana before, I would probably say, 
like it depends on how serious you are and like how quickly you want to learn it. If you're like, I've never studied Japanese, but I would love to be able to uh, get a job in Japan in a year from now, you know, or if you're just, oh, Japanese is cool. Um, but if you're really serious about it, I'd say definitely look for like uh, your local town. Like if, see if you have any universities going or schools that offer like a full time um, Japanese education, like the one I took. Uh, otherwise, I do know that other countries and cities may have long distance ones. Um, in my class, for example, we had like students who were like from New Zealand and from Greece and everything who were like uh, phoning in to this like long distance online course. Um, in, in the Swedish school with a Japanese teacher. So there like there definitely are those options. Um for me, like I started obviously as a beginner as most people do, and I just started like I Googled Hiragana and like or something like that. And I just printed an, a Hiragana sheet and like copied it line by line myself in my like notebook I already had with me, like every day for a week. And I then, you know, I just I just knew it after a week. And um from there on I guess I borrowed Genki from a friend and you know just started reading Genki on my own. So I guess actually just get Genki. That's a good place to start. And you know, maybe subscribe to some Japanese YouTubers or people who are English speaking people talking about Japanese learning like yourself um, or, you know, people like, like abroad in Japan or like there are a couple different channels. You know, it all depends on how serious you are, but like you're not going to go wrong if you just buy a copy of Genki and start reading. You know, Th this is going to be kind of interesting because you, you do speak three languages. Huh. Let me ask in Japanese specifically, what is your strongest suit in the language and what is your weakest point? And then to a follow up, because this is the part I'm interested with. Is it different uh, with your other languages you learn? Like, is it different with English? Dude, that is so strange to think about. Like, so the fact is that, like, me, like, all Swedish people, like, I've studied English for 20 years. I more or less think of it as a native language, like, a native language in the same way I do with Swedish, just because, it, like, it comes so naturally. And I've been speaking it for so long. Um, I don't remember a time not speaking English, if that makes sense. Uh, that being said, though, I mean, I remember studying German in school. Uh, when I was a little bit older, like 13, um, again, still like a decade ago, but I still remember that. And that to me was like the first time of like, oh, smokes, I'm actually going to learn a proper new language from nothing. Uh, jikes. Um, and that was hard German grammar, while somewhat similar to English and like Swedish grammar um, in a lot of different ways. Like it's it's way more tricky in a lot of ways than Swedish is. And it makes some of it makes a lot of sense like as a swedish speaker some of it doesn't make any sense at all uh and then going over to you know learning japanese for the first time um like it's it's totally different from swedish and german uh how the language is built and the grammar rules and you know obviously everything about it uh but it is like if you just take it for what it is i mean it is apples and oranges but it's so much simpler in so many ways like the grammar is uh, like the grammar is so much simpler than any european language um as you might know yourself uh it's there's so much you get for free when you start learning japanese of course other things are more difficult like the whole writing language uh and you know starting to even practice kanji it's like it can be so overwhelming for like for anybody uh, myself included not to rant for too long but <laughs> to specifically answer your question though uh, will my strongest and weakest parts of the language are so I, I guess my worst part is just remembering the kanji um no pun intended with the book but uh, just re yeah remembering kanji in general i'm i don't know I, I was good at it in the beginning the first you know 50 to 100 i was like oh man there's a piece of cake but once you get into like the n4 and beyond that i can only guess um a lot of them start looking the same uh they start using like the same radicals sometimes many the same radicals uh, except just one little stroke that is different and changes the whole meaning and remembering all of that as somebody who's like ever really learned kanji until like a year ago it's still very overwhelming to even like look at some of the n n2 n1 kanjis i'm like oh jesus i'll never be able to do this um of course you do it brick by brick and you'll be able to do it one day if you just put your mind to it but um what i'm considerable considerably better at i guess is um listening and understanding i'm not as good at, at speaking it myself probably because i don't do it on a day-to-day -day basis but i do listen to it on a day-to-day -day basis podcasts and youtubers and whatever um so whenever i'm like in japan sitting in a bar and people start talking to me i can typically understand 
like 80 percent of what they say as long as they are not talking too you know too formally um if you're just hanging around in a bar i can understand most of it um i am very bad at replying to them because i like i don't remember the words myself again because i do not speak it every single day or week for the matter when i do go to japan it usually takes me like the first week or two before i'm even able to like say something remotely uh accurate at all uh but the listening part is like way more down uh, and I think that that part sticks in your brain at a much more you know deep level than speaking it if you don't practice it every single day. That's my that's my very vague answer to a specific question. To flip the script on the previous one. No, it's awesome. I mean, that's I I'm just silent because I love hearing about that stuff. Hearing from people that have gotten and I I just spoke a little bit earlier to a guy named Lin who uh, was Vietnamese. He speaks English and then he learned Japanese basically to being fluent. Um, and then hearing someone that, you know, is sw- uh, Swedish and then learned English basically his whole life. So he's hella fluent in English and then is now learning Japanese, hearing the similarities and the differences. All this stuff is really helpful for me. So I, I thank you so much for coming on. This was invaluable for me. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, I always end on this last question because I think it's the most fascinating for people to uh, to end on. It's a two parter. The first parter, everyone always answers the same. The second parter is always different. I can promise you that. So you ready? Do you consider yourself fluent in Japanese? Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's. I mean, from everyone, I talked to a, an ambassador. He said the same thing. So what do you know? I guess huh. no one's ever fluent. Uh, final part B. What do you consider fluent? Oh. Um, going about your business, doing whatever you want for a full week and not having to look anything up would be my, like, if you can, if you can go do your day job and go out partying and go to a theme park and, and do that kind of stuff for a whole week, reading newspapers along the way, taking phone calls along the way, signing contracts along the way. And during that entire period, you don't have to look up any grammar points or any kanjis at all. I guess that might be fluent. I think my real answer is when you forget you're speaking the language or when you don't realize you're speaking the language or using the language, if you just walk by a sign or see whatever, a bunch of kanjis that are in Japanese and you just look at them and go, oh, nice, pineapple sale, whatever, you know. (laughs) And then afterwards you're like, wait, did I just read that in Japanese? That is maybe that has a, to be a, at least a fragment of being fluent. That has to be the most brilliant way of looking at it. Is you you you're fluent when you don't realize you're using the language. I've never even thought about what? that once. That's brilliant. Like, what does fluent even mean? Like it means when it when it flows, obviously. So I guess when just when it all comes naturally to you, when you just hear overhear somebody speaking somewhere, and you just all right. Uh, and then you can reply, oh, well, uh, jitsu, blah, 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 without even thinking about it at all. That's, to me, that is fluent. And that is a level that I guess you can achieve in, like, not too many years of studying if you really do it hardcore. Um, but then again, there's always more to learn, uh, no matter what you're studying, be it a language or anything, you know, completely different. So I guess nobody would ever consider themselves fluent. I do have friends who've studied from Sweden, studied Japanese, who I would consider fluent because they like they speak like a native speaker. They themselves probably wouldn't. So, you know, I don't know who's to say who is fluent or not, but yeah, that's my weird answer, I guess. Man, that is the best way to end this whole episode. I'm so glad you were my you're, you're basically my headliner and I appreciate the the insight you've given us. You have 30 seconds. Last 30 seconds is yours. Where can people find you? What 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 can they do to support you? Find me on youtube.com/endigo or you can find me Endigo Skyborn on all other platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh patreon.com/endigo, I guess. Uh but if you don't know who I am, that link is irrelevant. But uh, check it, check me out on YouTube, youtube.com/endigo. That's where i do my day job and check out my band batar b-a-t-a-a-r if you're into metal or rock or visual k or stuff in general um we were gonna play in shibuya on uh, next week but that show got canceled so don't come to shibuya uh and uh, yeah awesome man thank you so much i'll be sure to link all that down below and as well as have it on the video so people can find it uh anything else you want to say before i let you go for having me dude uh again been watching your channel for a good while um and during my early days of studying uh you helped me out quite a bit with you know finding the right resources so keep up the good work and uh here's to a happy 10k and beyond if you made it this far congrats to you guys you are the real champs uh thank you so much to endigo thank you so much to kenzie and thank you so much to lynn for giving me this chance to talk to me even though it was really inconvenient for both of us you guys had to stay up in the middle of the night i had to be up in the the 
ass crack of dawn, essentially. It was so interesting talking. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you're watching this video, you can go find their social media links down below. Go follow them. Endigo is in a hell of a band. He just released a really good music video. If you like heavy and visual K and just awesome, awesome stuff, go follow him. Uh, Kenzie is has running, an, uh, she gave me an Instagram channel, so we're gonna run her Instagram channel. Channel, Instagram page, Instagram profile, whatever works. Lynn as well, Lynn is a skateboarder in Vietnam and in Japan. You can go down there, check out his skateboarding videos, follow his life, talk to him. He's, he's a really sweet guy. If you guys like this video, be sure to like it down below. It helps me so much. It tells me if you guys actually wanna see content like this. This is very different from what I do, very risky. So it is important for me to know exactly what it is that you guys want to watch. And if this isn't it, no feelings hurt. Uh, we'll go back to normal, but just let me know down below. Questions, comments, concerns, or compliments, as always, put them in the box down below. I am happy to answer them. It is my privilege and pride to do that for you. If you guys like this video, check out my backlog of 250 Japan videos. If you're new to learning Japanese, maybe you've been in Japanese for a while and you, you need textbook reviews, you need advice, you, you're thinking about studying abroad, come talk to me. I'm here for you, bro. I got you. You can follow me on Twitter at That's My Chat. I got Discord down below where I stream every Saturday we watch anime and then after we watch anime, we play Fortnite. Who would have guessed? I also have a podcast every Tuesday and Thursday I release on a different channel. You can go to my channel, check it out. It's called the Wicked Miscreant Podcast. That's it for now. Thank you guys so much for checking in and I will see you on the live stream Saturday. Bye-bye.